Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Victoria 3, where we are broke, apparently. Um, I don't remember my balance being this negative. We are gonna have to try and fix that. Uh, sometimes the game does get patched a little bit here or there, which uh, can change things uh, while we're in early access, but we'll see if that actually is how things are panning out. Now, I remember that I was getting a massive government administration going. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to go to high taxes and start doing more consumption taxing. Let me have a look around. Where was I? I'm building government admin in places that are over their admin capacity at least. So that should result in a slight increase in revenue and government revenue because I have maxed out tax rates. Um, but I really don't like this super negative tax flow. What are, the go what are the goods that we are consuming? So right now we're consuming iron, wood, tools, and fabric. So right now wood is super expensive. I wonder if I can get an import route. Can I declare an interest that'll allow me to trade with Russia? Yeah, I'm gonna declare an interest in Manchuria. No, that does not allow me to trade with Russia. Ah, I hear, I hear. I'm gonna declare a, an interest in the Western Pacific Coast. This will allow me to trade with Russia. So in the next month or two, when my declared interest actually triggers, I should be able to start trading with Russia. And Russia tends to have a very, very large wood economy, which should help bring down the price of wood in my economy, which will make it much cheaper for construction goods. I'm pretty sure I'm essentially maxed out on logging camps. Yeah, I am, at least in Japan. There is like a little bit of logging. So where is this? Yeah, I could start a logging operation in Africa. I'll probably do that after my government administration goes through. Oh, wow. There actually isn't that much wood available for me in the world map, so i tell you what I might do. Once these government administrations finish, I might actually go even deeper into logging and start heavily logging Africa. What other goods are kind of expensive right now? Wood, tools, fabric, and irons. So let's have a look. Fabric is really, really expensive, so we just have to kind of handle all of those things. What am I building? Mostly whaling stations. So let's go by the most populated regions and we'll just kind of max out logging stations there. The hunger for wood that Japan has is just like insatiable. So I have a massive stack of logging camps coming. Tools are quite expensive as well. We'll need, we'll need to like handle these one at a time. We may also have to pause construction for a while, but the big problem with pausing construction is the velocity of money in my economy just massively slows down. Let's get as many import routes for tools as we can. I'm just going to try and import as much of every good as I can. So the head of the petty bourgeoisie is fighting the head of the trade unions. I say let them fight. Who cares? The good news is we are now producing a ton of oil. And there's steel frame buildings, although we won't be able to switch to that. Um, we're producing a ton of oil, which should now be getting sold via trade routes, mostly to England because they're consuming it at a high level. I'm trying to think, what is the best way for me to get out of this hole that I'm in? Well, one good way would be to lower my interest rate. This would also increase my minting. My minting is doing really, really well. And my interest rate is slowly climbing. This would buy me a lot of time to try and increase my economy. These techs are kind of overpriced right now. If I research anarchism, it would make these cheaper. Uh, I think we should start increasing some of our institutions, like for example, uh, increasing our investment into education, but also colonial affairs actually seems like a really good one. Um, so bureaucracy cost per level, one, two, three, that just about covers the excess bureaucracy so we can continue to be colonizers. We are waiting for the honorable restoration. Let's go ahead and keep colonizing. Um, this one has malaria. See, I would also like to start colonizing down here in the bottom left. So let's establish a colony here. That one has severe malaria. Yeah, severe malaria is a bit of a problem, but we can get... Wait, actually, you know what? I think I cancel this because I think I'm still colonizing over here and I want as much colonial throughput going through here as possible. This is going to be an important source of rubber for me. So the logging camps are starting to finish and the hope with the logging camps... Yeah, my economy is stalling slightly, but that's okay. The hope with the logging camps is that it will not only increase my GDP, which will increase taxes, minting, and so on and so forth, but it will reduce the cost of wood for me. Let's start lowering the wages of government employees. Let me have a look at the political situation. The intelligentsia are unhappy. The samurai are happy, so I can actually lower their wages even more. But I can't lower the intelligentsia anymore. It would be uh, dangerous to do. So that'll give me a little bit of headroom. Unfortunately, this will reduce taxes because people aren't being paid as much. Um, but that's kind of like a little bit of a circular thing. Okay, a ton of logging camps are coming online now. I'm going to go ahead and say that we want to protect our domestic supply of wood. So I'm going to change to a protectionist policy on wood. Uh, similarly... I'm going to do that for tools as well as iron. This will hurt my day-to-day -day income, but it should allow these iron trade routes to actually grow bigger. It'll cost me 10k per day, but if I come down to iron, if we look here, um, the maximum level should maybe start to consider increases. We just need to bring down the cost of construction goods. My big problem is that construction is very binary. I wish I could like lower construction throughput a little bit, but it's actually kind of okay for us to go into a little bit of debt here. Now we also need to bring down the price of the um, cloth. Now the big problem we have is the price of tools are steadily increasing as we decrease the price of other things, but that's all just going to have to be part of the um, 
sacrifice we make here. So it's a real question, do we want to use livestock ranches or do we want to use cotton plantations? I think a few cotton plantations might not be a bad idea. Particularly in Africa, this could be a good place to produce cloth. What's my current cloth deficit? The deficit of cloth in my economy is nearly a thousand. Each cotton plantation will produce 40. Now I do believe that cotton plantations, if I go ahead and build one, later on in the game they can be upgraded. With automatic irrigation, this would upgrade them to be plus 60, so they're going to get 50% better, but at the cost of engines? I think the fact that livestock ranches produce a variety of goods maybe makes them a little bit more flexible. Especially because fertilizer is a little bit expensive in my economy right now. So let's do some livestock ranching. Ooh. If I could get my hands on some explosives, I could massively increase the amount of gold I'm minting. Yeah, let's go ahead and build ourselves a couple of chemical plants. Ooh, wait, I have two chemical plants. Hold on, hold on. So I switch you guys over to vacuum evaporation. You would go up to 60 explosives, and that should just about supply these gold mines. And the problem is my chemical plants will need to spin up for a little while before those gold mines become profitable again, um, because there just isn't enough. But we should see a lot of extra minting from that. I think we're basically now, once all of these logging camps finish, that is us at our essential, essential maximum capacity for wood production. I don't think we can increase it really much more. We are slowly bringing the deficit down, like the balance deficit down but it, the interest hole is slowly climbing so we need to bring up our balance faster than interest grows in order to try and stabilize our economy um, and one way we can do that is to build a ton of probably we need to build like around a coal uh, and then around a steel and then around a tools in that order so i've got 15 coal mines on the way then i will need to make some tooling workshops and tooling workshops only use a little bit of steel so i think i can build them first but i have a deficit of over a thousand so i'll need 10 tooling workshops where do i have like 20 infrastructure here in my capital state yeah i can do it here and then these will also get a throughput bonus so we'll do that then in order to fuel these i'll need a little bit of steel so i'm thinking like five steel mills we've got a massive economic expansion coming but yeah it's been a few days since i played the last episode on this one so there might have been a couple of updates to the game the game has been getting updated even in the pre-release build which really just goes to show how much work that they are like pumping into this build right now the fact that it's getting updated right up until launch or at least, I, 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 there has been at least one update that I've noticed. I, I don't know if they've done more than that. So a large chunk of the offsetting of interest is going to have to come from lowering the cost of construction goods. We need to get this number to just come down. Labor is becoming exceptionally expensive in my country. I need to make sure that all of these logging camps are actually profitable. But eventually we are going to have to start using rail transportation in order to make them more profitable. Nice, the livestock ranches are starting to come online. That's massively bringing down the cost of cloth. It should also be bringing down the cost of meat, actually, believe it or not. Yeah, meat is becoming exceptionally cheap. Could I export that, I wonder? Nobody really wants to buy it. Why is the trade route level so low? It's just not a very pro profitable good, it seems. I suppose I will just try and export it to a couple of people, whoever are cheap. And uh, maybe we can get the price to come up slightly. Increase the demand for it. All right, that's huge. We brought down the price of fabric down to neutral, which has taken a slight dent out of our construction costs. However, the price reduction in cloth has just been mirrored by a price increase in tools. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're actually going to put the tooling workshops to the top of the list. Interest is growing. We're stabilizing. Yeesh. I didn't realize I was in such a crisis. I could pass another tax. I think luxury clothes would be a good one. Another 10k off the top. You just have to slow the bleed, slow the deficit. This wasn't supposed to be in my plan. My plan wasn't to be doing this deep of an economic investment. So Bemba has launched a native uprising against us. That should be fairly simple for us to deal with. We can just mobilize our smallest division and put it on the front line. We don't have to make any demands. We shouldn't have any problems. Nobody should really come in against this, as far as I'm concerned. One thing that I'm doing that I could maybe stop is that I am subsidizing railways. You know, they're kind of important. They're an important thing, even though they are um, privately owned. I think that's still important to do, to subsidize them. That's a government expense I'm not willing to cut, basically. War with Bemba has broken out. This should be a very, very straightforward, another one of these sort of colonial wars that we shouldn't have any trouble performing. The tooling workshops are just about to finish. This is huge for us. We should start to see the price of these tools shoot down as more are produced. Yep, there it is, shooting down. And as the price of that shoots down, the cost of my construction goods shoots down as well. Now it will kind of recorrect as the price of wood comes back up and other things kind of, you know, happen. Um, but I think we've managed to get ourselves out of the debt spiral and we can start climbing into debt. Oh no, part of the reason is because I've stopped buying construction goods. Okay, hold on. We're expensive on glass and a variety of things. So build a few glass mills. We could definitely use more engines. 
Let's get a few motor industries, I guess. What's our deficit on that? 140. We produce 40 per. So that would be... 5 should more than cover it. In fact, 4 would have covered it pretty comfortably. Uh, but if we make engines cheaper, that's fine. Then we need a little bit more steel. Sure, there's a little bit of steel. And then we'll need... A couple of chemical plants, I think. Just to give us a baseline supply. Oh! Has Shikaku run out of peasants? Shikaku has run out of peasants, which means I should come in here and for sure look for things that reduce the employment of these factories. Wait, why are you unprofitable? Because glass is expensive. Okay, so we need to solve the glass problem. Um, but like water tube boilers now, these sorts of things, these become way, 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 way more viable. Because it's going to lower the, um, the total amount of people who need to be employed in this factory, which should free up peasant population. Now, people will get upset that they lost their jobs, but at a slight cost in input goods, we can dramatically reduce the employment in here. So I dramatically reduced reduced employment in um, Shikaku, which means there's 1,600 unemployed people. They should now go find new jobs. Um, let's implement rail transportation in the iron mines here to reduce the employment. I'm going to do the same in the logging camps, and I'll do the same in the sulfur mines. I should probably go up to condensing engine pump here too, but these will all be upgrades that we do in good time. So hopefully that freed up a little bit of employment here. Yeah, we'll need to, yeah. We've got a we've got an un, we've got an unemployment problem or we've got an employment problem. We don't have enough people here who want to work the jobs. So we need to, or our businesses are overemployed, right? We need to upgrade the technology level to reduce the required workers, which will free up workers who can then get better qualifications and work higher more productive jobs. One way to do this would be to convert my urban centers over to public trams, but that would be really, really expensive, but it would massively reduce the total employment cost across my country, all in due time. Ah, oh, damn, it looks like I was too slow to intervene in the Papuan War, and now the UK is going to get it all. That's all right, it's not the end of the world. We managed to get a significant chunk, right? We got a couple of rubber plantations, we got a little bit of population here. It's not much, but it's enough to fuel our early economy that we got a little bit of land here. We might be able to fight these guys for this land later on. Right now, it's not possible. I'm going to start switching some of my railways over to um, wooden passenger carriages. That's because transportation is going to start becoming more expensive. It partic particularly here, as I switch more and more places to railway transportation to try to save on labor costs. It'd be kind of interesting if I had like a labor market piece of information that was telling me, oh, like this is how many people are employed here. This is how many open jobs there are. Uh, but I could see how many unemployed people there are, but not how many jobs are available. That's kind of like hidden information. We have managed to do the honorable restoration. So that was phase one. So now we have to do the Meiji restoration. So the Shogun has fallen from power. The Emperor Meiji has been restored. The political primacy of the monarchy the heralds a new era of modernization of reform. The Emperor must choose his political allies carefully. So we can go for the industrialists. We can move our capital state to Kanto, or we can work with the intellectuals. Let's have a look. Who's our strongest political power right now? It's actually the industrialists. So let's keep the industrialists strong. That was end Sakoku, and the Meiji Restoration was fully completed. Now we have to do the fall of some, the samurai. Japan gets samurai officers for five years. Weekly innovation gain multiplier for military, and they lose the Bakufu ideology, which was endorsing monarchy, serfdom, and autocracy. So I can say the era of the samurai is over, which will make officers and servicemen become more I, more radical, which is more likely to rebel, or I can let them keep their jobs as officers. I'll let them keep their jobs as officers. That's fine. Um, a renewed Japan, so we can say the Japanese empire will rise. We get military reform. We get a claim on a bunch of stuff, mostly Korea, actually, I believe it is. Yeah, our goal will be to conquer Korea. Um, let's see, we need powerful friends where we shall make Powerful enemies or railways are the key to our future success. We can get lots of railway building throughput. I like the idea of getting free claims. So yeah, let's get those claims and eventually we will conquer Korea. But I definitely feel like a militaristic angle is like a more interesting way to play Japan. So first we'll need to declare an interest over here and get to work on that. But that's fine. That's kind of a long term goal anyway. So Kansai has lost a lot of its market access because it's no longer the capital city of my empire. So we'll have to build a couple of railways in there. That'll get that sorted. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I definitely need to start producing even more tools if I'm going to go ahead and modernize my economy. So let's get another 10 tool factories on the way. So I've started mass colonizing the interior of Africa. It's not going super fast, but we colonize actually relatively quickly just because of our rather large population. So it shouldn't be a problem for us to get a good amount of Africa. We're also now the fifth largest economy in the world. We're about to overtake France. The the big problem that we have is the sheer the sheer amount of debt we're getting into. I, I can't seem to be able to outstrip my government spending by I can't grow my economy fast enough. So 
solutions here are going to have to come from the political tree. I think I would have to get international exchange standards and central planning to try to outdo my taxation capacity and try to like save my economy here. I do have lots of time before I go into like giga debt, before I'm in like a debt spiral, because you can see like it, it jumps up and down based on when like I'm spending. So if I stop spending, but if I stop spending up, my economy would slow down. So I'm caught in a little bit of a loop here where I, where I, I can't stop spending for fear my economy stalls, but I can't sustain spending forever. A lot of my fertilizer plants aren't making enough money. Why is that? It's because fertilizer is too cheap, which means I need to make buildings that use fertilizer to bring the price of it up. Or I could export it, I guess. Let's have a look. No one really buys a large quantity of it, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and just use it myself. I have a surplus of, how much fertilizer? 400, which means I need to make like 40 rice farms or 40 wheat farms. Right, so I've got 40 farms queued up. That should, well, I mean, the nice thing is it'll also alleviate my grain price slightly. So, I mean, it's not a terrible thing that I'm doing this. It's just not ideal. God, this price needs to come down. Let's get to work on international exchange standards. This will give us 10% extra minting and minus two loan interest, which will directly affect our bottom line um, in a pretty significant way because this interest number will grow slower and our minting will grow faster. God, we're just in a death spiral. <laughs> oh no. I had planned to do the Meiji restoration and then go to war and stuff like that, but I got myself caught in an economic cycle of doom. Hopefully more tooling workshops will bring the price of tools down. I think the elephant in the room is my iron price though. I'll need to start sorting that out. It's kind of been one that I've been avoiding dealing with. Um, but I don't think I can avoid it any longer. It seems like nothing I do can actually bring this price down long term. I can only ever affect it slightly. I wonder why that is. Is it just because the majority of the goods that I'm consuming for that is iron? Yeah, I guess the majority good is iron. So iron should have been the thing I was focusing on bringing the price down for. I don't like that I'm 10 million in debt. I really, really don't like that. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, it's only getting worse. I mean, my economy is just going vertical as I'm going into debt here. So, I mean, it is kind of paying off. Like, we're even climbing up to the level of the East India Company. Our economic dominance is, like, insane right now. One thing I like is, though, as you build up your country, you can see uh, the little wooden horse carts actually get replaced with railways. And the higher the level of the railway is, your country actually, like, starts to industrialize. It's really, really cool. Like, here's, like, the rural area. Here's, like, the industry. There's, like, a port. Um, the country actually changes over time. It's a really fun and beautiful thing to just come in and zoom in and, like... Just watch as your country actually changes. It's like probably the first Paradox game that really has like the map visuals really marry how your society and gameplay changes. Okay, we managed to get fertilizer production and explosives production up to a more reasonable level. Um, our chemical plants are actually now looking like slightly profitable. Sulfur is very, very expensive, so I need to deal with that. Let me go ahead and head over to my sulfur mines. And I'm going to go ahead and implement dynamite as well as the condensing engine pump to try to increase the productivity of my um, sulfur mines to try to bring that price down. So explosives and fertilizer are cheap, while your input goods are rather expensive, which is making it hard for you to profit, which means I need to find more things that consume explosives. And also, I think I'm going to switch over my farming to tool production now. Uh, I have a lot of overemployment in many of my farms. So by switching to using tools, this will lower the total amount of people that need to be employed at the cost of a single set of tools. But right now, tools are cheaper than workers. So I think this phase of transition, I can't do coal mines yet. Yeah, I need a lot more explosives before I can switch to dynamite in my iron mines. So I'll just switch one of my iron mines over to explosives. And as it's built up, the demand for explosives will increase gradually. So it looks like um, there's a native uprising here. Let's go ahead and raise an army, just a small one. My hope is that by capturing a ton of Africa, we'll have a lot of extra arable land and stuff like that so we can build up an even more vertical economy over the long term. But we are slowly stabilizing. We're almost out of debt. I keep saying that and then we go further into debt. It's like, oh my God, I'm like so, I, I feel like I'm riding the line right now. I'm going to start canceling my unproductive trade routes because they're using up authority, a very, very valuable authority. I'm also going to cancel all my inactive trade routes. But yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of pruning here. So a lot of people are importing my engines, which is driving up the price. A lot of people are importing a lot of my stuff that I don't have, like, I can't, like, deny that. I guess I could theoretically embargo, but I don't want to do that because this is technically people importing my stuff is making me better. One of the, the big economic problem I have is I just haven't been able to focus on consumer goods. And, like, the price of clothing and furniture is, like, out of the, this world again. So maybe I hope that if I do a round of furniture building, that would, um, that would help but I've got a ton of textile mills queued, queued up. The price of iron has come down massively as I, as I mass produce iron. This will be counteracted by my trade routes scaling down as they become less profitable. Um, but that's actually, kind of, I'm kind of okay with that because that means a slight oversupply of iron is kind of uh, good for me uh, because my 
construction industry is so dependent upon it and right now I'm just trying to stop the bleed. So now that we've done the Meiji restoration we can potentially start doing a little bit more reform. For example we could potentially go down to wealth voting which would politically enfranchise my country a little bit more. Looks like we managed to conquer the natives in the Congo so we just have to wait until they're ready to surrender. I don't like the way that they have the Japanese flag as like multiple dots. It's kind of I guess it's kind of how they do it for everyone but it just makes it look like I'm kind of like a plague <laughs> that has infected countries. <laughs> Like they got, they got Japan pox or something. Oh, finally, finally, finally. Right, we're, we're positive on cash flow. So being positive on cash flow as we're continuing to build means we will be able to uh, recover and, and get out of debt and potentially in the near future also lower our taxation because right now we're just, we're taxing people to the hilt. Okay, we may have actually overproduced iron a little bit here, um, but I'm okay with that because now we can start canceling some of these trade routes. Um, these trade routes are like massively tying up our uh, flotillas. So I'll cancel a few of the smaller ones, which should bring the price of iron back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're massively overproducing iron. But I'd rather overproduce it than underproduce iron because I use it as an important government good. Wait, shit, I was actually relying on iron tariffs. <laughs> import iron, import iron. Wait, no, I wasn't. I wonder why my income is dipping. I think we can stop uh, suppressing the landowners, which will free up a little bit of authority for me to pass more consumption taxes, like on meat and on porcelain eventually. Actually, meat is an expensive one. I want to put consumption taxes on things that are cheap to can to tax because people people don't mind if you tax like luxuries and um, you know vices. They get a little bit more antsy when you tax like clothing or grain. These things they get upset about. Nice. There's a 10% minting bonus and a 2% loan interest. So the next week that happens, we should see our interest rate dip significantly. There's the dip. So that's a lot of money saved. Then we should see minting increase significantly, which is a two-pronged attack on the problem I was having. Now I'm going to start researching military tax because I think it's time to modernize the Japanese military and start considering going to war. However, first I'm going to get improved fertilizer because fertilizers, if I can start consuming more fertilizer, I'll be able to increase the productivity of my farms. And uh, having chemical plants is going to be important for my arms industry. So getting that up and running will be a good step forward for us. So we had a little bit of an economic crisis this episode, but even even so, the line still goes up more. <laughs> the, the, the parabolic curve continues to be parabolic. Huge. So we just enacted wealth voting, which is massively going to open up the political power in my country. This will give extra political power f from votes, and you have to be at least 25 wealth to vote. This means poor people can't vote in my country, but I'm kind of okay with that because the goal is to do very, very slow reform. Nobody really wants to do census suffrage yet. I need to build up the power of the trade unions. One thing that we might consider doing now is potentially trying to pass multiculturalism because this is OP, in my opinion. It makes all culture groups in the game accepted in your country, which theoretically means that you can get immigration from across the world. And population is power. The population of the South Island is now what looks to be about 60% Jap Japanese, and we've had a lot of immigration here. Now, um, the bad thing is that the economy here is like really, really poor. It's mostly just like subsistence farming. Um, so it would be a good idea to build this up into like a booming local economy. We have finally found the gold fields, which is helping. Let's switch all of our logging camps over to rail transportation. This will free up 100,000 workers across my country. It'll also increase the value of transportation in the Japanese market, which might justify me going down here and switching my railways over to wooden passenger carriages. Now that'll hurt my infrastructure capacity, which I'll have to be conscious of. Um, but I can get that dealt with. But I think overall that choice will massively increase the GDP of my country and free up uh, low-skilled workers to potentially get higher skills. I do like that Japan is now a very healthy red color. I do enjoy that. I think we were like gray earlier, unless I'm just misremembering. But I like that we're now like almost indistinguishable from uh, the UK's color. So we're like, we're just hiding in plain sight down here. I think it would be a good idea to start planning conquests of these great plains, uh, the Salt Lake or whatever, the Great Lake states here. And um, these are really, really high population states. Um, once we pass multiculturalism, multiculturalism, they'll start to immigrate to Japan and uh, fill up our factories and stuff and lower our wages, which is good for the economy because wages are getting too high. So it's, it's uh, we don't have the technology to offset the high wages yet. So that would be like a good way to um, improve the Japanese mainland economy because we are, like I said, we're kind of beginning to run out of workers in some of these states. Like we're getting very low in Chukaku, in Tohoku, um, on free workers who can work in the factories. I probably won't do much conquest until we finish multiculturalism though. The big downside now though is as I liberalize my economy I'm losing authority which is going to make it harder for me to maintain important things like consumption tax. Um, so liberalizing your economy is is, is a trade-off in terms of gameplay mechanics like it, it doesn't just come with upsides. 
I'm definitely kind of starting to enter into territory of the game that I don't fully understand. Like, this is like further into the game than I've played before. So I really don't know how the late game is going to play out here. I think our main goal is to kind of follow our heart here. And I really enjoy building up a really, really strong economy, but I would like to... Oh, we've got a revolution brewing. Let me have a look at this. Okay, so now the problem is that our capital state has been moved. And so the state that is revo rev <laughs> the state that is going to rebel has all of our military. So that's gonna that's actually a little bit of a problem that we're gonna have to address. Let's build up another military in Kanto. Um, and we'll keep an eye on this and we'll stop trying to enact multiculturalism if these people get much more radical. We've managed ma managed to massively bring down the price of uh, clothing in Japan, which should have seen a corresponding rise in the quality of life of our people, which we kind of do see reflected there. So we just got breech loading uh, arms or breech loading artillery, which should allow us now to go to our arms industries and starting to produce breech loaders. This will cost quite a bit more steel, but then we can go to our military and tell our military to actually switch to shrapnel artillery, which is quite a bit more expensive. And we can't quite go to, we can't quite go to skirmish infantry yet because we need ammunition. Actually, does shrapnel, shrapnel artillery uses ammunition. So we're gonna have to build some more munitions plants. Um, so it'll take a little while before we can do that. We're also massively overbuying small arms. I think, though, this is as good a place as any to end this episode. A little bit of an economic crisis that we've managed to spiral our way out of, and we can finally start reinvesting into the military. So things are looking good for us here. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.